Redfield and Wilton Strategies to do a poll in July, and it found that 70% of Americans believe that children in schools should be taught to feel proud of their country. At the same time, 57% think institutional racism still exists in the United States. So, so Kim, if most Americans believe national pride is something we should teach, cool, maybe we should teach that. But also, if 57% of the nation believes that institutional racism is real, shouldn't we teach about that as well? Well, I, I think it's up to a teacher's discretion, honestly, in the classroom. And this is one of the side effects, I think, of the COVID pandemic, right? You had a lot of people that were able to see exactly what the curriculum was in each school because so many kids were learning virtually at home. And so I think it was a good thing, right? Now, I do believe that teachers probably should teach the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I think that's what they're trying to do in Florida. Uh, I have to say, I'm on Governor Ron DeSantis' side here. I know people are probably not shocked to hear that. Um, uh, but I do believe that we should be teaching some of the good parts uh, that came out of slavery. And I say that is because there Why? are some people that were born to slavery and they were able to take those skills that they learned and went on to be entrepreneurs. There are some of the uh, in inventions that we have today, like the folding chair with the bookcase in the back uh, that was invented by a man named Alexander, who was living in Lynchburg, Virginia. He was born into slavery, but he knew that there was a need there uh, because of the church that he attended. Had they not been slaves, no, they would not have learned those skills. But of course, I am not saying that slavery was a job program. That's not what I'm saying. I, I get that, but, but it, here's my concern with that. If I tell the story of American slavery in the abstract, in a vacuum, sure, right? We could talk about all the nuances of it. But this is a country that has historically whitewashed slavery. This is a country that consistently pretends that bad things did not happen. You add to that the fact that there's been a movement around the country for decades to change textbooks. And I even often talk about slavery as slavery, but to talk about it as uh, immigration, to talk about it as a jobs program and other things that you're not doing, but many other people have done. So against that backdrop, if we then uh, encourage teachers or encourage curriculum designers to focus on the good that came out of slavery, it becomes another way to sort of whitewash or to understate just how severe an impact slavery had. We are still to this day uh, harmed by slavery. We still to this day pay an economic and social and cultural debt to what happened to us in slavery. So if all that stuff is true, then a textbook spending time focusing on the fact that some people got some skills out of it. Uh, to me, it's time we could spend talking about the need for reparations. It's time we could spend talking about the lingering impact of slavery. It's time we could spend talking about the people who enter slavery with skills and who were actually selected for their skill sets on the continent of Africa. We can talk about all that stuff in a finite amount of time rather than talking about uh, a few people who were blacksmiths who were able to get jobs when in fact there's so many laws and programs stop people from getting access to jobs, to freedom, to justice, to food, clothing, shelter, equality, all that stuff even after so-called emancipation. Yeah, well, Mark, look, I still believe you, you teach the good, the bad, and the ugly. You teach all of it. And so I do have to ask you, you know, without slavery in this country, which, again, you had blacks purchasing blacks, you had blacks selling blacks, you had Native Americans purchasing blacks, you had blacks purchasing Native Americans, it goes on and on and on. And I think that conversation around reparations uh, does get very complicated. And I know that there are a lot of people that advocate for that. Uh, but beyond that, I have to ask you, what's complicated uh, where about would it? We be, where would we be today without slavery? Uh, she's def I, she's not American black, is she? I don't think so. Don't she said know. she was uh, camera her people. Um, yeah, she did so, say something about being from Africa. Yeah, so th there are only two African countries that are debated to have been never colonized by Europeans. Uh, you, you know, I'm sure you and PC are correct me if I'm wrong. One was uh, Ethiopia, and the other one is Liberia. And Liberia has the interesting distinction of arguably being colonized by black people from what, America. What? Yeah, to be fair, to be fair with Liberia, Liberia didn't exist when the mass colonization was going on. So Liberia was, you know, created, but right. yeah, it was it was an, an assimilation of American and African cultures. 
Right. It, <laughs> it, no, no, let's not be cute with it. It was Abraham Lincoln's dream. It was yeah. to send all the black folk back to Africa. Liberia right. came from that. So, and so let's, and let's, and that's why I say I use, I love to use the term because it, it causes conversation usually. Uh, usually heated debate with everybody attacking me for it, which I'm cool with. Uh, but I love to say black people colonized Liberia for white people. I, I ain't saying I, I'm just it's it's an interesting thought, right? It's an interesting nah, concept. Patrick, uh, several several African countries have resisted colonization. Well, I mean, she 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 never gave a list. So I don't I don't know which African countries. I know there's like over 50 countries in Africa, but I don't know like so she, yeah, see, there you go. So she's got a lot to choose from, but she never picked any. So I, I just, them the only two that I'm aware of is one that has a real, real big ass asterisk around. Matter of fact, you could put Liberia inside of an asterisk um, <laughs> in terms of this conversation. Yeah, and you got, yeah, just, just, just move to the side. And then you got uh, Ethiopia, which, you right. know, do, do we, you really want to do that with, okay, so. Uh, what we what we got going on is essentially somebody talking out of the wrong hole. So you're supposed to use the hole on the top of your head and your your mouth. This one, not the one that your pool come out of. That's the wrong hole to try to sit. That hole wasn't set up for words to come out of it. But there's so many people that like to try to talk out of it. It's like the old Chris Rock joke, which you could drive with your feet, but that don't mean you should. Do. It's a lot of people got gloves on their feet, and they own the steering wheel, and they just keep running into shit. And rest the knuckles. And that's, I think this interview was just an example of somebody driving with their feet. And they think they're doing a good job, and all the rest of us are swerving out of the way so that they don't kill us. Uh, and so with that, I'm going to say this. I blame Mark. <laughs> why, 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 why is she on your? You're supposed to be a, a, a intellectual. You're like you're supposed to be a thought leader, academic. I know those of you that disagree and you don't think he that smart. I get it, but he's supposed to be, and he has a large platform. At what point do we hold Negroes with platforms responsible for who they choose to put on their platform? We hold the schools responsible. Bad. We hold the schools responsible for letting. Uh, scholarly red and 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 Suki Booty and all of them other people come up and dance in front of the high schoolers. We hold the colleges responsible for having foolishness on their campus. When do we hold the black media outlets and intellectuals responsible for giving platforms to uh fucking people that don't really bring anything to the conversation? So there's that aspect, and then there's one other aspect I want to just touch on. It, before I land my plane, uh, I don't understand. So one, the whole yeah. argument was kind of silly to me because, like, before she went stupid, I don't understand why this is still a conversation. Like, uh, why are black people still asking? white people to teach our kids. I don't understand the basic premise of why we continue to have this conversation. Like because uh, they remember <clears throat> remember that time that Martin Luther King said that specific thing and that one speech that time and then people forgot all the other stuff. Well no no Dr. King Joe, says no, because you, you can't even say that because there ain't ever been one thing that King said in one speech one time. Like the the, the Well the, see <laughs> see now you you see you trying to use truth, Pat. And I'm just you asked the question, I'm just trying to explain it to you what well, they're okay, doing. I don't because I'm I'm like I'm like, okay, why why we keep see okay, so 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 we know that white people don't want to teach their kids a certain message. And we understand that because we don't want to teach our kids a certain message either. But see, what the disconnect, I'm, and I'm confused, is, okay, white people, like, they, they run the public schools. That's what they do. They kind of do that shit when it comes to, like, group stuff and running stuff. Even when they don't like each other, they, they kind of do that. That's kind of their thing, right? That our thing is singing, dancing, and, and entertainment. They think it's kind of like power and using it over people that like to sing and dance power. and other things. Power. So, 
so 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 what I'm saying is if 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 they do they thing in that area and they don't want to teach their kids certain things, why why are we going into their area and wagging our finger? I don't why don't you just see teach your own kid what you want? I, all right, I'm done. See, all right, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. But, I'm done. but see, I'm talking about see, you had cut me off, dog, and I don't appreciate mm. that. And I just, <laughs> my fault, my hey, fault, my see, fault. I'm talking about the Dr. Martin Luther King from the movies. Oh, right. Well, would not. So you talk about the actual historical Dr. King, but the Dr. King from the movies, he said well, something. Right. Hold on. And what hold he on, said hold on. was by a unity path. But see, the Dr. King, you said early, you can't trust people when they eyes is too close together. And the, when I watched Dr. King. And the, the one in the movies, you know, I I made my screen real small and I measured his eyes was less than a millimeter see, apart. I think that. See, but <laughs> but you know, dog, it's about unity, Pat. And you know, you don't understand unity. And if you teach these messages in the school, it's gonna drive our kids further apart. Because that's what Dr. King in the movies said. Oh, oh, so so what you saying is, uh. Uh, black people want white people to accept them? Yes, right. Black okay. people want white people, but also black people want white people to you know, care no, and no, have no, 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 no. You ain't even got to finish that because PC finna cook. But I get, let me, let me paraphrase what you just said. Go ahead. Uh, black people want white people. 